Hi there, WhatsApp family and YouTube friends. I am very happy to be back with you. And so we completed. Did you have a good laugh at that video with um, um, Debbie Ann? <laughs> oh, well, we are starting a new series today. We were a rather short one, I think. And I think it is one that has influenced my, my teaching background. You know, when I was teaching, I honestly love vocabulary. I think sometimes I used to kill the church of it, vocab word. I just love words and I also love learning new words. So I want to bring some of my favorite words um, into the spiritual realm. Now these words may not, not they may not, they are not necessarily found in the Bible, but the concept though is, is, is found there or at least I'm going to show you how I'm going to apply it. So for the next um, two, three, Four notes, I think we are you you may be learning some new words, some you may already know. So let's get started. Let's pray. And I hope that you're doing good by God's grace. All right. Heavenly Father, thank you for these moments we have together. We ask for the blessing and anointing of your spirit. Help us all to learn something for Christ's sake. Amen. All right. So the word or word for today is connoisseur and let me tell you the spelling of it i trust i pronounced it correctly i did make a check my aunt is a retired french teacher so i know if i pronounce it wrong she's gonna come for my neck <laughs> it's spelled c-o-n-n-o-i-s-s-e-u-r connoisseur i did make sure and double check the pronunciation though all right now what is a connoisseur well you may double check, but this is the meaning that I got. A person who knows a lot about something, such as um, art, food, wines, etc., an expert in a particular subject. Okay, so I'm going to jump over to my publication now and share from a section there that is entitled, God, the Perfect connoisseur <laughs> the text is romans 8 28 and we know that all things work together for good to them that love god to them who are the called according to his purpose all right so i say all aspects of a person's life's journey may not appear to be good words like good and bad negative and positive become relative when we are walking with God. Often or bad is actually God's good or a part set back is often God's set up as strategically designed. The above text, which is Romans 8, 28, is often trun truncated to say, all things work together for good. But that is really not the case, you know. The most critical part of that text would be these words, to them that love God. And why would this be so? Because for the person who really doesn't know God and doesn't love him and doesn't understand the idea of a, a plan, a benevolent plan for, for each one of his children, or oh, they may prance up and stamp up and throw a tantrum and shout and shake the fist at God. And indeed, God doesn't get upset. He just, I see my time galloping by, oh boy. He just says, like a child might say to um, a parent, might say to a child, okay, well, when you finish behaving bad and stamping up, you come back over here to me. <laughs> or I jump back into the book now, though, where I say, for indeed, if you love God for himself and not simply for his blessings, then his love will lead you to see the bigger picture, not simply the specific testing circumstance before you. The outworking all depends on your response. I have seen in my life's um, experiences the marvelous working together for good about which this text speaks. It has been totally awesome. I had shared many, many goodies in those letters before I turned off the faucet in 2010. 
or was it 2011? There is still more in the pipeline. My dear friend, mentor, and former teacher, the late Mrs. Ruby St. John, who was one of my main proofreaders for the manuscript with the prayer letters and also Julie Williams, Ruby often commented on the force of the letters. On more than one occasion, Ruby would say, Nola, that blew me away. Or she'd say, I would give you an A for that letter. Ruby was indeed a positive and encouraging person. Without a doubt, God's purpose toward me has always been one of benevolent kindness. Maybe onlookers felt that I would die of thirst at Mara, but God knew that he would replenish me. All right, so we're going to stop here for today. And tomorrow I am going to continue with another word. I'm sure that you're going to learn some new words. I remember my friend Mark DeBuyer, who is always teasing me, <laughs> telling me that he wants me to teach him English. I tell him just read the letters. All right, anyhow, you have a great day, and we are going to catch up very soon today. God bless you, and again, thank you for allowing me into your into the privacy of your space. You have a great day.